details, and thanks so much for uh, being a part of another awesome webinar with uh, Shweki Media, and I appreciate the partnership, and I know you do too, because each and every time we get together, we talk about cool, amazing, and stuff. And today we're going to talk about 10 tips to increase digital sales. I think I've probably got 100 tips, but we only have time for 10, so I've tried to pick the best 10 as we walk forward uh, to talk about digital revenue. Now, a lot of you are in the planning stages uh, you know, at your business, and so it's real important uh, to really think of closely about your digital strategy plans. What a lot of times is that you have really good intentions. You're going to go to a conference or you're going to attend a webinar, and you're going to have really awesome intentions. The problem is execution, right? So what I'm going to do is present 10 things that I know are working for publishers, uh, large and small business-to-business, business, consumer, and we're going to walk through them in some pretty good detail. So, all right, first, tip one as you're looking to increase digital sales is this. Advertisers will not buy if you don't understand. And it doesn't, does it? Because a lot of times advertisers will look you in the eye. They'll say, oh, yeah, Ryan, I like that idea. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Let's go with that. Present a proposal. Then you have a proposal, and then what do you hear? You hear re, 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 cricket, right? You hear nothing back from them for weeks. Here's the thing. Advisors are looking for a shiny new object. Advisors are looking for a new idea, but very often they will see you when they actually don't understand what it is that you're pitching. I mean, think about it. Do you buy things that you don't understand? Well, I do, okay, but I'm a weird guy. I like to buy things and give them a try. Advisors inherently are adverse to risk. Again, again, advertisers, by nature, inherently, they are adverse to risk. And that to be very cognizant that advertisers will not buy what they understand. And the more media options that we offer, the simpler our sales approach is going to have to be to suggest is as you add new digital options, as you add more and more options, very well might consider is this, getting rid of an option that you're not using or is not selling. Now, as time goes on, are our digital options going to become more and more or they become less and less? Clearly, answer from everything that we've seen over the last 6, 8, 10, 12 years is that options are going to grow grow, sales approach needs to be that much more simple. Something, 86% of people are visionaries. So a member of your sales team, a member of your IT team, your publisher, whoever it is, you're a person that tends to show up to a sales call in conversation and a lot of talking. Remember something, it's difficult to sell digital options by mouth, by talking about it. You've got to know it. You know what those things are. Okay, and that leads us to idea number two, which is the power pricing grid. Now, the power pricing grid is something that's been evolving and I've been using for probably the last six, eight years. Now, why is it that I keep bringing it up? I keep bringing it up because so many of you fully don't understand this simple premise. That is, if you get an advertiser to understand buy more digital from you, you've got to done it in a much more simple format, in a simple way that makes sense to them. Now, look at the example that's on your screen. You see here that you have a full-page example. They call it the smiley Pete, okay? A full-page example. Also, Mr. Advertiser, going to be mentioned or shown in our digital edition. And you're going to get also get a banner ad. You're also going to get a mention in our e-newsletter put you on our social media feed three times or whatever it is in a given period of time. Now, at fade value, when you look at that pricing grid, it makes good sense. Here's the problem. Most of the time, sales reps give too much detail because you think, you think that the advertiser wants all that detail. Here's the fact, okay? The fact is this. Most of the time, you have the advertiser at the base property. Whatever the proposition was that you were giving to them, based on you, they get The programmers will get into the nitty-gritty. They'll say, okay, the decision is read by so-and-so. It's sent to so-and-so. And, -so. and that 
advertising, that banner ad. It's going to be a 728 by 90. It's going to be delivered 180,000 times. And this, advertisers begin to back off. And, wow, what is it? It's overwhelming. That's the thing about digital, everybody. Digital can be so overwhelming. But we all know that it works and it's a popular option. So keep it simple. Even looking at your media kits, we've talked about this before. When you're reformatting your media kit, do it in such a way that it's got high-end visual appeal. Okay, this is a fictitious example that I put together here uh, using a cover from a oh, great magazine uh, called D Magazine. And what it does, you notice on the right side, we've got 10 pieces of information, no more than 10. The audience, we have a declaration of how much our readership is, and then we show a visual. 80% of people are visual learners. Where did I get this concept from? I really did is I've, I've always thought to myself, how to teach a child how to do something. Now, I'm, I'm not calling advertisers children. I'm not saying that we should talk to our advertisers like they're kids. Although, you know, hey, you know, grade, right? <laughs> the thing to remember is this. You visuals, Chet Holmes, the best-selling book, The Ultimate Sales Machine. If you haven't read it. And what 12 tips to sales success? Use visuals. That book's been translated into multiple languages. It's a worldwide bestseller. So if you don't believe me, believe good old Chat Holmes that visuals are the way to sell more digital products. All right. Idea number three. Sell social media. I'm going to take you down two paths, okay? Two paths for selling media. Now, the example on your screen is from Runner's World. But let me pause. Let me give you a little disclaimer. I don't hear on TV. I'm trying to give you legal advice. I follow the examples of big magazines like the World, Epic Magazine, the Houston Chronicle. I mean, me companies large and small doing paid content, paid advertising, or some of you might call it native advertising on social media feeds. So. It's, if they're doing it, I'm going to do it until such time that, that I hear from my legal authorities that we can do it. I've read Facebook's Terms of Service, and I see that there's a problem. All right, two paths. For, and the second path is new and unique. Not to talk about it before. The first path, what you see on your screen, this direct post into your Facebook feed. All right, so you're a publisher you're in, on your Facebook page. You're going into that Facebook page and creating a status update. Okay, you're writing a post. Now, are you aware that when you post on your Facebook page, that all fans or all of your likes, okay, are not going to see that post unless it's directly to your page? Are you aware of that? Some are, some of you aren't. The fact is, you're probably maybe one, maybe two. Your likes are actually going to see it unless you pay to promote the post. So you have to look at this. I mean, is if if it's not worth paying to promote the post, should be posting it at all? All right. Now at this point of selling it. So you see direct post for Gore-Tex. Okay. What we're seeing from our friends at the North Face. Okay. And it's saying compete and do our seven trail distances, three stops left in the U.S. Blah blah blah. This is something that, in my opinion, would be a part of a sponsorship deal or a part of a paid endorsement. This is a direct post. How to charge for it? I can charge $75 to $125 per thousand number of users that engage with my posts. How do I get engagement? I can look at my Facebook analytics. Okay, How many people actually do something with your post? That's one way. Look at this. They said in this Facebook post, it says, from our friends at the North Face. So they're being declarative. They're saying this is a sponsored post, okay? You just say sponsored. There's different ways that you can handle it. Now, the path that you might take is a sponsored post or a ghost post or a featured post, whatever you want to call it, and it's like this. You've probably seen it uh, up on your Facebook feed. So here's an example for Quaker, and here's one for Cabbage, okay? Now, how do you do this? Um, it's quite simply, all you're doing is placing an ad for an advisor using the sponsored post update feature. And you can Facebook that, or you can Google that and how you actually do it. Now, is it charge? Yeah, 
Facebook is going to charge you to do this, so make sure you factor that in your pricing. Now, the suggested post, why do I like suggested post format? I like it because of my publishers have an issue with church and state. They don't want those two lines to cross. Okay, no problem. A suggested post allows an advertiser to reach your Facebook likes, their friends, their acquaintances, their associates, without it physically coming from you, with that post actually being put on there or looking like it's put on there by you as the publisher. It accomplishes the same goal. I don't think it's worth as much as a direct post, Okay, as this example that I gave you here, I don't think it's worth as much. So how do you charge for it? I still would charge somewhere between $75 and $125 per thousand based upon the number of people that engage with that post. Now, you might say, well, Ron, that's the exact same price that you gave for a direct post. It is because the range is going to vary. Okay, let's just say that you're dealing with athletes. You might charge more and they're dealing with just the general public or maybe with a mom or with a dad, okay? So you want to adjust it accordingly. Is there a baseline I can give you? Yeah. In mean, most cases, I charge less than $75 a thousand. And you need to factor into your price that you've got an administrator that's going to add that stuff to the page. You're paying uh, Facebook for that uh, proof as well. Now, some of some smart cats out there on the webinar today. Or, hey, Ryan, why do you pay me for this? They can just place a fake ad on their own. Well, they can, but you have to remember. You can only target an ad on Facebook, but you cannot isolate typically the readers of a magazine. So if you're an advertiser, and you specifically reach a certain group of readers, quite a the only way you can guarantee to reach any of that group of readers is by going through a publisher. You can get pretty darn close, but only those uh, that are publishers or people that own those Facebook pages can give you that guarantee. So if you need help on that, reach out to me. It's an hour-long conversation, maybe a two-hour conversation we can have on it, and uh, give you some more direction on that. Okay? Uh, just reach out to me, Ryan at 360 com. All right. Idea number four of ten, content from sponsors. Oh, Ryan, bring that up. Okay, here's the thing, guys. Content from sponsors, also called native advertising, is becoming extremely prevalent within the publishing community today. As a matter of fact, I don't know very many publishers that actually don't have native content on their websites. Here's the interesting thing. You'll read it. If the content is good, good content good content, whether it's from an advertiser or it comes from your editorial team, put tests in place. Make sure you have some editorial guidelines in place. Reach advertisers in a way that's very well thought out. And spot, as you see here, this is from a little website called the Wall Street Journal. Okay, That's a joke, people. Okay, If the Wall Street Journal is doing it, you might consider doing it as well. Now, how do you charge for it? I charge for it almost the same way that I charge for a bad because it's taking up space on the website. The paid content is of some type of download. Maybe it's an e-book. Maybe it's a restaurant guide. Maybe it's a pub guide. Maybe it's a camp guide. Maybe it's a research paper. paper. What it is, the best content from sponsors is content that's downloaded. That's the kind of content that uh, actually readers actually want. Here, number four. Go for guys, native advertising, content from your sponsors or from your advertisers. Now, some things that you might consider doing with your sponsors or your advertisers. Specialized email letters, you special topic sections of your website, maybe a gardening section or whatever. Download ebooks, white papers, and what expert videos video channels. That leads us to idea number five with expert videos. And then I'm going to show you a channel. Lineup. Your advisors are absolutely some of the best experts that are out there. And at the end, I really want you to consider what could we do to get our advertisers involved as experts on our website. Now, 
for those that are in the city and regional space, okay, it's really for restaurant owners, right? It's hard to get with managers. You very rarely ever meet the chef. It's difficult to get those kind of people in your book on the website. Now, just imagine if you've got two phone calls coming in, from a salesperson wanting to sell you a print ad. It's from me. And I'm saying, hey, John, I've got a crew available. I'd love to shoot three or four recipes that we can feed on the website, have your chef cook them up in the kitchen, talk about the restaurant and feature it on the website. Give me a call. Love to chat with you about it. Now, for me, this is about a bait and switch. This is about me presenting an idea to be cheap, it's affordable, something you can really turn into a big gangbuster revenue idea. John's going to call me back. I'm going to say, the idea, of course, we need, there's some cost involved because we want to promote it, we want to cover the cost of the video crew. The cost will be X and make sure it's reasonable, do five or six videos in any given day, uh, that way you can um, uh, keep your costs low. Make sure the editing is simple and very straightforward, and make it a part of the package. So you'd tell him, hey, we're going to shoot these videos in a video channel on our site. We're going to call it uh, At Home Cooking or Kitchen Cooking or whatever it is. What you need to do is run an ad in the magazine to promote that as well. You can put this on your website right, to promote your business. You know, guys, I can't tell you how many times look for ways to get into hard-to-reach customers. Now, let me give you an idea. Let's just say the business-to-business, business, okay, you're in the B space. We use video to do business profiles. I'll answer and say, hey, hey we'd love to do a business profile on you, and of course, uh, you know, we'd really appreciate uh, you supporting that video uh, by buying an ad in the magazine or on the website to promote the video. Now, you can package, present a package, present it as a value add, how you want to do it, you guys have to tackle video. Find a wedding videographer or a local production company that's reasonably priced. I get wedding videographers all the time because typically during the week they're not busy. Typically their work is, is good, but it's not such that it demands seven, eight hundred a day. I read a videographer in Nashville, a really a good one, top notch videographer. It's about three hours a day. Really amazing job. His editing was also about $300 a day. So don't think for a second that you hire a, a crew from Los Angeles or New York City to come in to film this stuff. Find a little contact with them. There's also networks out there that you can find of videographers all over the country. If you have trouble with that, reach out, out to me. I'm happy to help. All right, keep moving forward. A wrong assumption. Look carefully at your screen. A wrong assumption. You need to be smarter and not harder. That's wrong. Okay, I'm here to tell you it's, it's not easy today. The question is, you need to work harder. As a sales team, you just need to be smarter about it. So to that, I want to share with you an overview of my Big 50 processing plan. Now, some of you have been at conferences where I've been at, and it takes us an hour and a half to talk about the Big 50. But when you're selling digital, you are going to use math now, keep in mind, I'm a relationship kind of guy. I'm all about building relationships with advisors, and I hope that you are too. But what I'm all about is I'm about the understanding that math, okay, math is just a success. We math, math, side, okay, math, M-A-T-H, good old-fashioned arithmetic, which means that to be a digital success, to be a sales success, Side. Now, what you see on your screen is 50 customers, brand new, come with me in a year. I run into 10 each day. On as an example, uh, Dr. John. I'm going to call Dr. John every day until I get through. Great voice email. I email, and I've got templates that I can share with you to do that. Here's the number. you got up frequency as a sales rep if you want to sell digital to work the numbers in your favor. You keep going back to the same advertisers, back to the same well time and time again. And what happens? You start tiring those advertisers out. They get what I like to call media fatigue. 
And when media fatigue happens, well, they're just not buying anything else from you. So I want you to think about this Big 50 plan. You're going to work uh, 10 people every day. You're going to work the same 50 people all throughout the 30-day period until you get them to a meeting and talk to them about their digital products. Uh, idea number seven for you, a contest and promotions. You know, you're not running actively promotions on your magazine website. You're doing yourself a disservice because let me tell you, big data is coming up. We're going to talk about it here in a second. What is your big data plan? Well, if you don't have any data, you can't really have a big data plan, right? So to that end, it's so important for you to contest and promote a calendar. So what do I mean? I mean, go to a whiteboard in your office. I, I'm looking at my whiteboard. <laughs> go to a whiteboard and then divide the whiteboard in lines with electrical tape. Make it nice and straight. That's going to put out the months of the year at the top of the whiteboard. Then you need to match that promo calendar to your editorial calendar, which you're going to match it up. What you're going to do is each month you're going to slot in a promo, some type of contest where you're working with an advertiser to make a contest or promotion happen. Okay? So it's important to have that in writing for you to on a wall and to look at it. That that's so important is because if your sales team can't see it, Selling it grows exponentially, and that's why you need a contest and promotions calendar. I would put this together at the same time you put together your editorial calendar. After your sales team is on board. I would brainstorm with them to make sure that we've got ideas that we can match up, so we can really get out there and sell those contests and promotions way, way in advance. All right? Our idea number eight, and that's selling big data. Okay, so you have to ask yourself this. What is all Did you know that actually own data, you as a media company, okay, and you have great data in place that is mineable, okay, increase your company's value, okay, core value. can increase that by as much as the 6X. If you're looking to increase the value of your company, you want to have mineable data. Now, listen, there's a lot of companies out there that will help you with this. Knowledge Marketing, or they, they're called KM for short. Knowledge Marketing is a great company. You've got companies like Hallmark Data Systems. There's a lot out there that are designed to help publishers, okay? The thing is this, you have a big data plan. Now, why having this reader data is important? Let me give you uh, let me give you an example. Let's uh, example on your screen. Let's this woman's name is Lisa. Okay, so in week number one, Lisa is read an e newsletter that you so far. Okay, Lisa read that e newsletter. Then reading the e newsletter, click on the news that's in an advertisement. Ha! With the where we have just mined a piece of information about Lisa. It would, we could make some assumptions. Okay, so she likes shoes because she clicked once, but what if week number two, she a newsletter, and she clicks on another ad that she shoes in it? Example. That means the system is going to track and know, okay, this is Lisa. We might have graphic information on her. Maybe we know that she's a female and she's between the ages of 20 and 45, she worked on two different retail ads shoes. So week three, I'm able to go to an advertiser that's a retailer that shoes that they're wanting to sell. And I'm able to say, what I could deliver a message for you directly to the 75 people last week that clicked on shoe ads, what would that mean to you? And did you notice I said, well, we're only going to send it out to 75, but these are 75 prime people that we have their habits. You might say, all oh, right. You know how far off this is? Remember something, guys. It's so important. As we're talking about it, because it's our future. As publishers, we have awesome content. Everybody wants our content. What we do have is in a 
mileable format that will very quickly and easily in it and sell it. And you might say, oh, do I need the reader's permission? That day one, okay, when you sign somebody up for your e-newsletter, your content, your promotion, it's believably important for you to declare to them in a non-legal statement, okay, declare to them what you're going to do with that data, okay? Just don't bait and switch them. Be clear, all right? All right, next, idea number nine, using Google to drive contests and to drive editorial. Now, all of you have been there before, I'm sure. You go on Google and you're searching for something, and you see up there on the right side of the screen all those pads that look just like this one that's right here on your screen right now, okay? And it says scholarship ad, ebook, financial aid, and college scholarship help, potentialing.com, okay? Now, how many do you click on those ads? Most people would say, I never, ever click on those ads. Well, you need to remember. Remember, there's a company named Google, and Google is getting millions of dollars a day from clicking on those ads. And that would encourage you as publishers to consider using Google AdWords campaigns. People over to your awesome editorial, maybe a special series that you're running, to people over to videos, and goodness sake, use those Google AdWords campaigns to put your content. I have some publishers, they spend three grand a month on Google because they know they get found. They know that people are going to click and view their editorial content. We tell them if we're sitting together, we give you advice, and we together some good strategies to drive traffic. I'm going to say, hey, get your SEO squared away, get it perfect, and maybe one of our next classes we'll dig into 2014 SEO because it's about the changes. Second, use Google for what's there. Use Facebook for what's there. Use it to drive traffic to your website. Many of you, your SEO is not very good, okay? And you use Google Assets to help drive traffic to your website. Get 500, 600 bucks a month to the effort and see how your web tra traffic must grow, especially if you're running some contests. All right, last, last is called Sell. Self-service sales. Self sales is all about presenting sales videos to your potential advertisers that learn about your products without even having to talk to a salesperson. Oh, Ryan, whoa, whoa, whoa. Are you trying to fire my sales people? Not. What I do is I sell media as well. What is an advertiser that when they call me, I explain everything to them. I love it when an advertiser calls me and says, Hey, Ryan, I want a sponsorship at your Pro Classic event in Kinder, Louisiana. I said that I could get a banner ad on the website, banners in the arena at the event. I can be on the webcast. I can buy an ad in the magazine. I love it because you watched my videos. Service sales. Advertisement. Plain and simple. It's all about advertiser education. I want you to consider this. Video for a new product that you watch as a digital product. Video that explains it. Take from your magazine and create a video from that. Hire a video team to come in and create some clever videos, maybe some fun videos. Keep it affordable. You don't need to spend a lot of money on this. And there's an example right there on your screen, so just pause this video and then go to that YouTube uh, uh, link right there and check it out, or an email, and I'll fire it over to you as well. But sales videos are the spice of life. They really are an awesome way, an awesome way for you to easily be able to share your sales story and your digital sales. Like I said at the beginning, I've got all kinds of revenue ideas. I'd love to share it with, the, with you uh, as a Shweki customer or somebody that's these videos in an educational way, written me, Ryan, at 360adsales.com. Very happy to send you uh, even more uh, video ideas. Well, there's 10 tips for you. I hope you'll watch this video over and over again, and I hope that you'll reach out to Shweki and thank them for putting together these awesome educational learning series. I'm from 360 Ad Sales and Brain Swell Media, and as always, I like to make sure I share with you that, that everything that comes to me through, through Shweki, uh, 
partnership we have, receive a 5% discount on services, and I'm here to help you. So thanks once again to the fine folks at Schwecky, and thank you for taking a few minutes to reach out and engage your business. Take care.